it's Mia here and welcome back once again to another movie review. Now I know it's been a while since I've done a movie or show review. I just really haven't finished any shows and honestly I haven't really watched many movies. It's been weird. I get a problem where I start to accumulate watching too many shows at once so then I don't finish any, especially if the shows are too long and I get bored of them. It's a whole conundrum. So, you remember in my last bookish video, I reviewed the manga Wolf Children, and it's right side up, even though I wasn't looking at it, so ha! Huh. But today, we are going to be talking about the movie adaptation of this manga, Wolf Children, the movie. Now, I will say that right off the bat, if you are someone that is into more action-style anime movies, then this probably is not the movie for you because it certainly is a more story-oriented, story -oriented, heartfelt story. It's not a hard-hitting bunch of explosions, anime blood, all of this stuff. It's none of that. It's a very heartwarming story. I mean, for the first 21 or so minutes of the movie, there is hardly any dialogue except for small bits of narration and maybe one or two lines from the main character. So, Wolf Children, much like the manga, is about a woman named Hana, not Hannah, Hana, and she falls in love with this boy who ends up coming to her college one day. They meet, they go out, they start to get to know each other, and finally, after a while of seeing each other, he feels comfortable enough to tell her what he really is. And this kind of leads to the weirdest scene in the whole movie, in my opinion, and that's the scene where Hana and the wolf gentlemen have sex for the first time. And it's not graphic or anything, they don't show it. It's mainly just him in his wolf form and Hana laying on a bed. But like, I get that love is love, but if that was how my husband looked while I was in bed with him, I think it would mo ruin the mood real quick, and that scene always made me question things. I get they wanted to show that this was new to Hana and show that he wasn't quite human like she originally thought he was. Still strange, like I don't know if I could handle wolf form sexual encounters. Like. Switch back, if anything. But I digress. So, down the line, Hana ends up pregnant. And that's why that scene is so important. Because it's setting up the whole rest of the story, which is all about the wolf children. Ame and Yuki. Yuki is one year older than Ame, and she's a tough little tomboy. And Ame is kind of sickly and frail and scared and actually the complete opposite side of the coin to Yuki. So Hana struggles in the beginning because her husband dies. He tragically slipped down a drainage ditch or like a canal, a man-made canal when he was trying to get food for Ame, who was, like I said, sickly and frail. And of course, she can't tell anyone that the wolf down in the gutter is actually her husband. People would think she's crazy. So she just kind of has to let his body be taken away in the garbage truck. Which, that is incredibly sad. And also, they never explained how they explained away the death of a man because he had a driver's license and everything, so and a job, so I'm sure he had paperwork of his existence out there in order to have those things, but they don't 
go into all of that. They just go right in the story with Ame and Yuki. Now, Ame and Yuki being as young as they are, they can't distinguish when they want to be a wolf and when they want to be human. They're constantly switching between the two. And because of this, Hana feels very worried to be around other people. Because she's like, well, what if they're playing and they get mad and they change into a wolf? Or they're excited and they change into a wolf and then everybody's going to be staring at my wolf child. Like, oh god, it's a monster. Let's experiment on it. So, yeah, I can get where she's coming from about not wanting to show the kids to people. And she also has this conundrum of, at one point, Yuki eats the inside of those freshness packets that come in packages and stuff. She gets a hold of one of those and she eats it. And she's throwing up everywhere. And Hana doesn't know what to do. She's like, do I take her to an animal clinic? Do I take her to a hospital? What do I do? So that's a dilemma. Like, I personally would take them to a hospital, but like I said, what if they shift in the middle of being looked at? Then you got a problem on your hands. Because it's not normal for a human to turn into a wolf. And before you ask, no, the, they are not a traditional werewolf. They're not, oh gosh, it's a full moon, gonna shift and not be able to control myself. They're what's known as a child of the wolf, which is someone who is born half human, half wolf. So they have full control over their transformations, except when they're younger, and or they get really, really angry, excuse me. But yeah, they have full control. They can change anytime they want. And they're not controlled by the full moon or any of that, so that's that. But as they get older, um, Hana decides that maybe they should move to the country. They should move up into the mountains like her husband wanted to do, to give her son and her daughter the freedom to choose between either the life of a wolf or the life of a human. So they end up moving to this gorgeous old Japanese style house up in the mountains and fixing it up and starting to grow their own food because they're only living on the meager savings that Hana's husband left behind. So that's where they grow up. They start to meet their neighbors who help them learn how to farm and they start to come into their own there. They're getting older and they're getting less shy and knowing that maybe being around people is not all that bad. But then when Ame turns 10 and, and they're out running in the snow, which this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie, is when they're out running in the snow because the camera tracks the snow as if we're one of the wolves that are running through the snow. And that, mixed with the music and the fast movement of the camera, just makes you feel like you're actually running with the wolves. And it's pretty cool for what it is. So that's one of my favorite scenes. But as they're running in the woods, Ame sees a, what do you call it? A kingfisher? A bird. He sees a bird grab a fish out of the river and he's like, ooh, I bet I could catch that. So he goes to catch the the bird and he is successful in catching it, but then he slips on his scarf, falling in the water, nearly drowning until Yuki pulls him out. Why is this important? Well, because that's when Ame decides, maybe I am a wolf. Maybe I'm not this timid, sickly shy little boy. Maybe I'm stronger than that. I caught this bird. What else can I do as a wolf? So Ame starts to go more down the path of a wolf. He finds this mentor that's, a, that's an old fox and he starts to teach him the way of the wild and then Yuki overhears the other mothers 
talking about preschool and she was like, I want to go to preschool, I want to go to preschool, I want to go to preschool. So she ends up going to preschool after promising that she will not turn into a wolf. And her mother gives her a spell to keep her from turning. And this is about the only thing different from the movie to the book is the fact that in the book, the spell her mom gives her is something about octopuses. But in the movie, she simply says, I want to be a little girl all the way home, as she points to her chest, saying, I want to be a little girl. But in the book, it's something about octopuses. But I, I get that in the book, it's kind of weird to sit there and say, I want to be a little girl all the way home, but it's even weirder to bring up random octopuses. So, and in the context of the movie, it makes more sense to have her say, I want to be a little girl. So, they start to branch off and become their own people. Ame getting stronger in the wild side of the wolf, while Yuki likes having friends and going to school and growing that way. Until she meets this boy. And for whatever reason, this boy is drawn to her. And she is not so keen on it. He senses that she smells like a dog or, or something and that puts her off of him so she tries to avoid him because he shouldn't know that but he persists, chases her, and then grabs her where she then attacks him which shouldn't be grabbing people anyway but so then she decides, screw it, I don't want to be a wolf, I don't like this part of me, I like having friends and going to school and being human and all of that. I just hurt someone, I just attacked someone because of the wolf. So yeah. And it, that's all it is, is this family learning how to cope with being wolves and being human. This mother who was left alone, left adrift, not able to teach them in the ways of the wolf like her husband would have been because he was the wolf in the family. So she's got to figure that out along with figuring out how they're going to live um, from their day to day life because they can't be around people a lot. And then the kids have to figure out when and where they can't change and who they want to be and if they want to be a wolf if they want to be a human and it's a great story and this movie says a lot while saying very little it's got great music behind it great voice acting the animation is very it doesn't look hand drawn but it's got a hand drawn digital style look to it and it, the lines of the characters are very soft and very flowy and the backgrounds are really nice and really detailed and it's just an all-around heartfelt story and it's honestly a relaxing watch so if you're looking for something a bit more heartwarming and a bit more relaxing sorry there's a nap <laughs> if you're looking for something a bit more heartfelt and relaxing. I highly recommend Wolf Children, but if you have not read the manga yet, go ahead and do that. It's not a big read, despite how thick it is. It is a manga. It's a lot of pictures, so it's not that big. Alright, what are you guys reading or watching next? Let me know down in the comments below if you like. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, guys!